So I recently got a request asking for a better explanation about mortgages and you know how the numbers work, what I should be looking at. This is by no means a substitute for talking to a lender, but here's a quick crash course. Um, I threw this together in Excel real quick, just to give you a basic idea of how you might want to frame it. One is you have people that come in with a large down payment, like 20% down. We have people that come in with low or no money down programs, like you can see down here. And then we have other classes of investments, like investment properties, owner-occupied, multifamily. I should put that in here, multifamily. Um, but there's a there's a basic breakdown. Basically, anytime you're occupying the property, you're going to get the best interest rates, which right, right now are around 4%. And you can have the seller pay some or all of your closing costs, which varies from loan program to loan program. What I think really matters is this: these last two columns here. What's my monthly payment going to look like? And what are my out-of-pocket expenses? Obviously, the more money you put down, the lower your monthly payment will be. But then that means more money out of pocket. Um, that is not to speak negatively, though, about these low or no money down programs. Anytime you can get money loaned to you for around 4% is a good day for me. And I would encourage you to talk to your financial advisor about what you could do with your money besides dumping into a house. Um, but it will cause your monthly payment to go up a little bit. So let's scroll down here a little bit. And I've got a couple examples just to put it you know, uh, some concrete numbers. So if I'm doing like 20% down, that means I have no mortgage insurance for those people who are savvy about what that means. I'm guessing my interest rate is going to be about four and a quarter, but you know, that really is a very personal thing based on your situation. My monthly payment, just under 1200 bucks, but I need $52,000 to buy a property if I'm buying a $200,000 property with about $4,000 worth of taxes. That's a lot of money. Most people don't have that money laying around. So they might opt into like a 10% down program or some of these low money down programs that I was talking about, like FHA, USDA. There's even some supplementary things that we can do through Pennsylvania. You'll see here though, your monthly payment jumps up. But if it's going from 1200 to 1400 plus or minus, and I'm able to save $30,000, that's a pretty good deal. And keep in mind, we haven't even talked about the seller assist right here. You know, most of these programs will allow you to take up to 6% seller assist, which on a $200,000 house is 12 grand. So if we subtract $12,000 off this, you can see how it becomes very affordable to buy a house for, you know, under 10 grand. Or if we subtract $12,000 off of some of these no money down programs like USDA and VA, you can actually buy a house for under $1,000. Now, that doesn't mean it works that way in every situation, because obviously there could be competing offers or a seller who refuses to give the $12,000. But that's another day and another problem that we can talk about. The other thing I just wanted to mention is if you're really into multifamily properties, be aware that generally speaking, the only way you're going to pick it up is if you put 20% down. Um, if you're looking for something outside of the box and you can't afford the 20%, we really just need to talk on a one on a case by case basis. But generally speaking, just assume it's not out there unless you go to what I was referencing before, like the multifamily, ooh, I can't type, multifamily properties where you're owner occupied. Yes, you can in fact buy a duplex for three and a half percent down and your monthly payment will be, you know, six, 700 bucks because I'm assuming you're collecting 800 bucks a month from your other tenants. Um, so let me just do like a nice little summary. If you're looking to buy a house, yes, you need to talk to a lender. Yes, you wanna do it sooner than later. No, it's not especially expensive. With this scenario that I was referencing, a $200,000 property in the, in the neighborhoods that I was pulling from, most of those rentals are $1,500 a month or more. So when you look at it, even on the high end, it's cheaper to own than it is to rent. And your out-of-pocket expenses, if we get a $12,000 seller assist or even an $8,000 seller assist is incredibly affordable. In some cases, it's actually cheaper to buy than it is to rent because they're gonna want two months worth of security deposit, one month up front, and then who knows, maybe you're paying like a pet deposit that may or may not be refundable. So give me a call if you have questions about these numbers, you wanna dive into your specific situation, but that's a basic crash course on what mortgages look like and how you might wanna think about them. I'll talk to you later, bye-bye.